Hi, I'm Marianne Aliardi from SJ Magazine, and last summer I set out to become a gardener, and I did pretty well. I put it on the wrong end. I may have killed it before it even got, got to grow. So I'm back for season two, and this year I'm going to do something I've always wanted to do. I'm going to grow tomatoes. I love tomatoes. I especially love tomato sandwiches. If you've had a tomato sandwich, you have to love it too. If you haven't had one, what you do is you take a tomato, you slice it up, you put it on white bread, you put mayonnaise on it, and it is so, so good. So while season two will go live in a few weeks, I have discovered that you need to prep early for tomatoes. We don't want you to miss any of those tips. So Tony Farmer is coming over. She's gonna teach me those early steps. Consider it a preview for season two because this summer I am determined to become a gardener. That I am a gardener. Anna. All right, before we get to the gardening, why are there all these extra steps in planting tomatoes? I thought we were just gonna put, put it in the ground. Well, and you can, but in South Jersey, we have a thing called blight, soil-borne disease that really impacts tomatoes, and it leaps onto the leaves from the soil, and it can also be airborne sometimes. You can't get rid of blight, but you can manage it, and that's what we're gonna do. All right, so if we do this for my second project and tomatoes don't grow, it will ruin my whole summer. I just want you to know. There's going to be tomatoes, okay. I promise you. Okay, good. All right, all right, let's go. Let's get started. Okay. The bed is all ready, and if you remember, this is the bed that I built myself. Thank you. <laughs> so what do we have to do to get started? Just gonna, not too deep, just a few inches down and just kind of turn it over like this. Okay. And the reason we do this is we want our roots to not have a difficult time growing, and if the soil has gotten really compacted over the winter, we just want to loosen this up um, and then just spread the soil back on. All right, this is looking good. Yeah, I think it looks great. I think we're yeah. ready to plant. Let me give you a cool tip. When we plant tomatoes, yes. sometimes there isn't enough calcium in the soil and it can cause something called blossom end rot or other conditions. And then you have to come back and add calcium later on. So okay. what has a lot of calcium in it? Bananas. Bananas, okay. So if you come to your garden and before you plant in a certain area, tomatoes, dig a little hole, Drop the whole t banana the peel. The whole banana whole peel. Fail. No. Oh, look, here's a worm. You said you hadn't seen oh, any worms. There's oh, a worm. Wow. So you are touching that with your bare hands. Yes. Is it alive? Yes. <laughs> worms are our friends. Something you've never heard me say. <laughs> so, the banana peels, they could be any banana. There was not a banana inside it. If you right. have a whole rotten brown banana, you can throw the whole thing in there. Okay. Or if you just save your peels for a couple of weeks before you know you're going to plant, throw yeah. them in the refrigerator, yeah. and then stick them all in the garden soil, and you know you've got enough added calcium. Wow. Okay. And you put them all there. You didn't spread them out. I would put them anywhere I was planting a tomato plant. Oh, okay. Got it. So the next thing that we need to do is soak the soil. Right here. So how do you know it's wet enough? So that's a great question because a lot of people would just spray for a couple minutes and the top looks wet. Yeah. And that's a bad thing because then you're encouraging your roots to grow at the surface and I want them to grow deep. So it rained here last night. Yeah. I know this is pretty wet, but yeah. if you're if it's been dry for a couple of days and you're planting, just take your spade and after you water, dig down a little bit. And if you see dry soil just an inch down, okay. continue to soak this until you see three or four inches of depth and you know that you've really got the soil wet. Another way you can do this this is just, I normally use my fingers and I just kind of like poke down and feel if it's dry and yeah. right there. And you're going to do that too, right? I have <laughs> oh my God. Here, I will do that just to Are prove, you going to do it? Just to prove <laughs> that I am a gardener, right? This makes me a gardener. So what did you do? You stuck your fingers in? Right in the dirt. Right in the dirt. There might even be a worm in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. okay. Oh, it's not too bad. No, it's, it's not. And, and it's it feels wet. wet down there. It feels wet, All right, so you made the right call. Okay, so can we move on now and plant? Well, hold on. We have blight in our soil in this area, and I don't know if you're gonna have it. So I put down a layer of cardboard to block the soil from blowing or um, jumping up during rain onto the leaves of the plant, and then cover it with mulch. And so a great source of cardboard. Yeah. Most people don't know that um, pizza boxes are not recyclable, and so what a great way to recycle them. Wow. Put them in your yard like this. And then I soak them really well because I want them to be wet. And then I'm going to take my big old knife and I'm going to cut a little hole right in the middle here. This is where I'm going to plant my tomato. 
and that is going to keep the tomato from coming in contact with the soil. So then we'll take our tomato cage, one tomato cage per tomato plant. I know it's tempting to plant a lot more. You might want to help me with this, Marianne, because sure. sometimes it can be hard. When the cardboard's really wet, it goes right through. Okay. But sometimes it's a little hard. So let's push down. So we, oh, we got it. Oh, right that, on the first was, try. that wasn't so bad. <laughs> and then push your tomato cage down so it's really sturdy. Okay. Because your tomato's going to look really cute and innocent when it's little, but it's going to get, they can get six feet tall. And if it's tall and covered with fruit, you don't want it to push this whole thing over. So really make sure it's sturdy in the okay. ground there. I brought you the brandy wine. It's kind okay. of like the top of the line, beefsteak tomato, great big, rich tomato. All right, so I remember the string bean incident last year <laughs> where I tried to move something yep. and when I pull, it broke. Yeah. So, so how are you pulling it and it's coming out? So I'm not pulling it. I'm okay. gonna gently put my fingers around the bottom. Yeah. I'm gonna dump it upside down and I'm gonna oh. pinch this until it comes oh. out of my hand. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. And I'm gonna keep the label because I guarantee if you plant more than one variety, you'll forget yeah. what you planted. No kidding. And that last, last year I forgot everything that I planted. And I'm gonna stick him in here. Nice. Just like this. If your tomato's really tall, you can bury it a little deeper and bury some of these leaves, but he's not very tall. Okay. And then I'm going to remove any yellow leaves that I see. Are they dead? They're not dead, but they've just done their job. What is the purpose of the cage? You need the support because if tomatoes lay on the ground, they'll rot. But we're not done yet. We need to yeah. put some mulch down. So I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you want to garden organically or not super important to you? No, I guess organic. organically is better for everything, right? I think so. For, yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't require that everyone that I help garden organically, but I yeah. prefer to. Better for the environment, better for you. So I brought some cedar mulch here. Okay. And the reason I love the cedar mulch is because it is natural. It okay. smells great. And it also will trap um, moisture in here so you water less, so you're conserving water. Okay. And then last but not least, it's a great weed block. Is colored mulch, is that a new thing? been around for a long time and some people yeah. prefer a particular color for their landscaping ah. and there are some that are natural and wood chips are also a good choice but if it's been chemically dyed I don't know what's in that and I don't know if it's safe to ingest it sure I love how you do that with your hand because <laughs> you have Marion I think here. you need to stick your hand here. in here no oh, no I think you need to put your hand in but wait okay but wait <laughs> if I had done that would that have been really bad no no okay seriously I mean is it not wait I can put my glove on smell it it smells wonderful yeah. it's cedar cedar I remember when I was a kid I had a cedar call absolutely because it? it repelled what moths exactly yes so it doesn't repel all insects but it does repel quite a few yes and we're just going to cover the whole pizza box up because really you don't need a ugly pizza box in your landscaping no. no i am so excited though to have tomatoes i especially can't wait to have a tomato sandwich oh me too but are you a helen's girl or a miracle whip girl oh no 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 only miracle whip <laughs> no only helmans <laughs> you only almonds. It's no. the only way to eat tomato sandwich. Oh my gosh. No, I only grew up on Miracle Whip. <laughs> my mother will tell you it's Miracle Whip. Put in the comments what you think is the best mayonnaise. Pay you no know, attention to the woman over here. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. One more thing. Make sure you check back every week. At the end of each episode, we're going to check on the progress of the tomato. And then eventually, I will be eating a tomato sandwich.